Nicole Chase. I attended Stanford University studying bioengineering, and this summer I worked at the Savon Research Institute at LA Children's Hospital. I'm uh, Dr. Amri Ford's lab. His lab aims to better understand the disease necrotizing enterocolitis, and my project specifically focused on the use of burst colonizers in treating NEC. NEC is a devastating disease in the intestine. It's the most common and lethal intestinal disease in the neonatal population, with up to a 50% mortality rate. It's primarily found in immunocompromised premature infants, approximately 8% of those with birth weight less than 1,500 grams. It's characterized by a severe inflammation of the GI tract and ischemic necrosis of the intestinal mucosa. And current treatment is limited, but includes broad spectrum antibiotics, no oral feeding, IV hydration, and in severe cases, surgery. Although the exact etiology of the disease is unknown, there have been a few consistent factors observed in babies who develop the disease. Uh, one of the most common being formula feeding. Form formulated milk lacks protective factors found in breast milk, like mother's antibodies, that can uh, protect the baby from becoming immunocompromised. Another risk factor is prematurity, because premature babies are often subjected to increased amounts of antibiotics and prolonged hospitalization periods which can delay their colonization and decrease their exposure to natural environmental flora. They also tend to have immature lungs, which can lead to poor oxygenation of their GI tract and cause ischemia and inflammation in their intestine. All of these risk factors can shift the intestinal microbiota to a less favorable profile by allowing bad bacteria or opportunistic pathogens to colonize the GI tract and overrule good bacteria. Previous work in our lab identified that one of these pathogenic bacteria, called Enterobacter sakazaki, later reclassified Chronobacter sakazaki, actually increased the incidence of necrotizing enterocolitis. And this discovery opened more gates for people to identify a causal relationship between specific bacterial strains and NEC. So the question I wanted to or what I focused on for my project, uh, I focused on three specific bacterial strains uh, that are naturally occurring in rat microbiota and have previously been cultured in our lab, which are E. coli CE10, Chronobacter, and E. coli PF7. And um, I wanted to answer the question that if these bacteria were reintroduced into a neonatal gut, would they, one, be able to establish themselves strongly as first colonizers, and two, would their ability to colonize induce or contribute to the incidence of necrotizing enterocolitis? So my hypothesis is that E. coli CE10, Chronobacter, and E. coli PF7 are all capable of colonizing neonatal rats, but while CE10 is protective from NEC, the other two strains mentioned are opportunistic pathogens and will increase the incidence of NEC. And to test our hypothesis, we use the neonatal rat pup model, where uh, at first we transformed the bacterial strains using a plasmid conferring ampicillin resistance and expression of clean fluorescence protein. Then we gave this transformed bacteria to <coughs> neonatal rats during their first feed, and we also kept some litters that were only formula fed and as to serve as a control group. Afterwards, the rats were subjected to three days of the NAC-inducing hypoxia formula feeding regimen, which simulates conditions of prematurity. And on day four, the rats were sacked and their intestines were assessed. On the left, you can see a picture of the rats. And on the right, the black arrow points to part of the colon, which was used for cultures. And the green arrow points to the terminal ileum, which was excised and sent to pathology for analysis. The results were analyzed in three ways. The first way was microbiologically, in order to show the total bacterial makeup of the pup. We wanted to see that the bacteria we transformed and introduced to the rat would be able to establish itself strongly in comparison to the commensal strains. So how we did that was we plated on three different types of plates that you can see there. Um, the MRS ones grow facultative anaerobic bacteria, the blood ones grow uh, most common types of bacteria, and LB plus ampicillin plates grew only our transformed bacteria because it was ampicillin resistant and, res and expressed GFP. So how we calculated the percentage of GFP was taking colony counts from those 
LB plus ampicillin plates and dividing by the total bacterial population. Second way we analyzed our data was uh, histologically. So the uh, terminal ileum that I was talking about before was sent to the pathology and put on slides. And these slides were scored on a scale of zero to four. Uh, zero being no disease, one being a little epithelial sloughing, two is destruction of the villi tips, three destruction of the villi crypts, and four was total uh, perforation of the intestinal wall. So a score of two or greater indicates that the rat had NEC. And the last way we analyzed our data was just staining for apoptotic cells. We used a tunnel stain to stain the uh, fragmented DNA of apoptotic cells, which you can see in green. So we just compared, like a score of zero had really long villi here, that you can see here, and a uh, score of four, there's, the villi are blunted down to the crypts, and um, there's sloughing into the lumen, you can see there. Here are results. These were our results from the microbiology analysis. Uh, we found that every single uh, strain was able to colonize and establish itself as a colonizer. Uh, PF7 had an average percentage of 16, Chronobacter had an average percentage of 25, and CE10 was a very efficient colonizer and had an average percentage of 54%. These were our uh, NEC scores. Uh, so you can see the, the black dots here are how many rats were scored, um, their terminal lineum was scored. So and the red lines represent the average of each bacterial strain. And this is the most important graph. Um, we found that in formula feeding mice alone, 59% of the rats had NEC, which is, remember, a score of two or higher. Uh, there's no statistical significance between formula fed and PF7, and similar to Chronobacter. Uh, the, they had, a, it was about 49% for this one, and 52% uh, for Chronobacter, and they had p-values of 0.31 and 0.52. However, there was a statistical significance between the formula fed and the CE10. It reduced NEC by almost, approximately 20% with a p-value of 0.026. Uh, so in summary, E. coli CE10 established itself as a premier first colonizer and actually reduce the incidence of NEC from 59% to 39%. However, the data on E. coli PF7 and Chronobacter were inconclusive because we wanted to see that they would increase the incidence of NEC, but uh, we found them to be more benign. And in conclusion, C10 had a protective effect, uh, which is important because bacteria similar to the strain can be augmented using probiotics and use for the prophylaxis of NEC. And continuation of the project is also important because being able to identify uh, potential bacteria as pathogenic could lead to the, the development of more targeted antibiotics.